best seeing with your mind is envisage. Actually, that really takes us back to where you were talking about at the beginning of the show, kind of seeing with your mind, using very visual kind yes. of, uh, of language. And we talked colourful language a couple of times, but colour in language is not always indicative of something good. No, sometimes colour be can be quite uh, sinister. And I'm going to talk about a couple of poisons tonight. Name your poison, Richard, because uh, most of these relate to colour. Now, the first is cyanide, which I always find ghoulish because it's an anagram of nice day. Um, <laughs> that's linked to the colour uh, cyan, which is a, a deep green-blue colour and comes from the Greek word kianos because uh, the poison and the colour both derive from that same pigment. The next is arsenic, the classic uh, Agatha Christie poison, and uh, that comes from, again, a colour, zarnik, that's with a Z, Persian word for golden yellow, which is how the element appears. Now, the next is not related to colour, but uh, has a colourful backstory, and uh, belladonna. Do you know what that means in Italian? Uh, well, I, I take a guess at beautiful lady. Beautiful lady, Bella Donna, beautiful lady, that's right. Um, now, the reason why beautiful lady is attached to poison is because it was used as a cosmetic uh, back in the 1800s as a means of dilating the pupil. What, you mean people would actually not, not put it on themselves, but take it? That's right, very small uh, doses, because uh, the effect of the poison was to create that dilated pupil, which was uh, back then a, uh, a, a sort of hallmark of beauty. That is high risk fashion. <laughs> high risk fashion, all right. Uh, now, this is even riskier stuff because the word poison itself comes from the Latin word potare, which means to drink, and it's uh, what gives us such words as potion and potable. But uh, I'd actually recommend that uh, backstory with a little bit of a, uh, a health warning. I wouldn't recommend drinking poison, that's for sure. Not for consumption. No. Thank you, David. Let's have a look at our scores. Brian's on 12, Tanya just four points ahead on 16, and we're heading for some more letters from Tanya. I'll start with a consonant again. Thanks. Thank you. Let's start with P and a vowel. E. Consonant again, please. D. And another vowel. U. And a consonant. L. And another vowel. E. Consonant, please. D. And a vowel. O, and lastly, a consonant, please. And last letter, M. Time starts now. Tanya? Uh, I managed a seven on that one. Brian? A uh, five for me. Let's hear your five. Is duped. And uh, your seven? Uh, Moulded. David? Well, Brian, you haven't been duped because Moulded's a very good seven. Well played. Um, the best that I could find too, so uh, a good seven. It was one of those mix when you actually look at it, you can think, hmm, that almost sounds like a nine. Peduledom. <laughs> <laughs> I presume pedule isn't a word of any sort. Now, that is high risk play, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well done, Tanya. Seven points. Will we see any high-risk play this time around, though? Let's see. Uh, your letters, Brian. Thank you. A consonant, please. Thanks, Brian. N. And another one, please. R. And another one. D. And another one, please. G. And a vowel. O. And another vowel. I. And another vowel, please. A. And another vowel, please. O. And a consonant, please. And last letter, S. Here we go. Of that, Brian? 
I've got a six, Richard. And Tanya? And a six for me too. Let's begin with yours. Daring. And yours, Brian? Grains. David? Both good sixes, but uh, I would have encouraged you to use the ING ending with a little bit more abandon because there's words like adoring or soaring for seven. But there's actually a nine here, Richard. A nine. A full Monty. A full Monty. <laughs> Very nice. What have you got? It doesn't use the ING. It's actually a lively dance, plural, and it's rigadoons. Rigadoons. Mm -hmm. That is a very unusual word. Because there was that town uh, in, in a film long ago called Brigadoon. That's right, the mythical town. Well, I suppose Brigadoon... Uh, they dance Rigadoons. They may well have. <laughs> well uh, done, David. Excuse me, David. Yes. I think I may have found a, a nine. Well, an Italian nine. What's that word? If, if we were in Italy, grandioso. Yeah, no? <laughs> an <laughs> Italian nine from the Belladonna. <laughs> Really, really, because it's not just a word in Italian, it's also a word in English, uh, meaning majestic or broad in music, so you've actually got a bilingual nine. <laughs> oh, well done, Lily. Well done, David. And well done, Brian and Tanya. Six points each. Well, after all that excitement, let's go to the calm of numbers. And, uh, Tanya, what would you like? I also like two large and four small. So good things. Thanks, Tanya. I can do that for you. Two large and four small. And our numbers... Five, six, one, three, and the two large, 75 and 100. The target to reach is 583. And 30 seconds to get there. For a while, Tanya, no problem. I got that one, Richard. 583. Well done, Brian. Uh, one off at 584. 584. Bad luck. So, uh, Tanya, take us to your targets, please. So, five times 100 is 500. Five times 100 is 500. Plus the 75 for 575. Add the, add the 75 is 575. Plus the six. Plus the six. 581. Yep. Plus the three, plus 584. Yep. And then minus the one. Well done. Minus the one, 583. Yep. Nice work, Tanya. Right to the target. I'm just trying to see. Is that a kitchen sink? Have we used everything? I think we pretty we have. much have. Yes. Good well, work. Yeah, good work to Tanya. I did the same way. Excellent work as well. So uh, 10 very big points to Tanya. Our scores, Brian, 18. Tanya is on 39. Let's have another break and another word mix, of course, for you. Orai rant. And the clue, you'll need it if your goods are faulty. See you in a while. Yeah. 